everybody. Okay, we're going to jump right into it, huh? Um, it's great to see so many people here, and uh, thank you to to the NAFME board for uh, organizing this. This is going to be the first of many opportunities for all of us to communicate. Um, I also want to thank and recognize all of the staff and the faculty who are here this evening, too. Um, they've worked incredibly hard for us to even get to this point where I get to do a Q&A with all of you about uh, coming in. I want to thank all of you who are here. Uh, we've been working really hard to ensure that we all together can um, run the Cali School of Music this semester and this year. And I appreciate um, all of you being so committed to this place, as am I. And I think, um, you know, what we get to talk about this evening is really in that spirit because you know, as we sit here, um, I don't, it's hard to, you know, say things that haven't been said a million times already, but, you know, as we sit here, um, we're still in the middle of this pandemic. We're one of the few universities who are running any semblance of their music program in person as of today. And, um, we have a lot of, uh, a lot of great plans that have been made and a lot of, uh, uh, questions that need to be answered and we've been doing this with uh, you know the resources that we have so tonight I just want to talk to you about where our planning's been uh, where things are going and what you can expect for the most part when you when you show up on campus uh, next week if you're not already on campus which actually I think I've, I've seen a few of you so without talking uh, too far in the past um, as a lot of you know, originally, uh, Montclair State University and all of the other universities in New Jersey were planning on opening, um, first of all, just opening, and second of all, opening with a lot of different uh, class modalities uh, as far as in-person and, and hybrid, you know, we're going to, we can use the language hawk flex and everything, but in, in, in general, in-person hybrid or online. We were planning on opening as long as New Jersey hit a stage three reopening as an entire state. Um, if, you, if you didn't know, New Jersey is still not in stage three reopening. And what I did, along with um, the rest of uh, the university's senior administration, is uh, write a waiver request to the state of New Jersey stating that while Every single thing that we offer at the School of Music is incredibly crucial for the education of all of you. There were uh, a few um, subjects that we needed to run in person in some way, shape, or form in, in order to give you any kind of full kind of School of Music experience. And those, um, those courses were our large ensembles. They were our chamber music ensembles. They were our private instruction. Um, there are a few other exceptions too, but in general, it was those moments of face-to-face -face music making that we really found could not be duplicated online in any way. We wrote those waiver requests and they were granted. Uh, they were granted last Monday. And then last Wednesday, the governor issued an executive order allowing colleges to begin in person. <laughs> so let me unpack that for you. Um, that was as surprising to me as it was to anyone else. And in, in essence, really made it so that we didn't need to write those waivers. However, the exercise of that and planning for that was absolutely necessary. And where we stand today, where I stand today, is looking around the nation. If you, if you saw the Wall Street Journal this morning, Notre Dame, a uh, few other universities tested everybody on the way in, don't have any commuters, everything was as perfect as they could make it and they still had to shut down in a week because of COVID outbreaks. So where I am is that I think we came up with some pretty good solutions for the time being that are innovative, they're different, they're, they're gonna be interesting, we're gonna talk about them. But I was not going to pivot, especially from last Wednesday and say, we're gonna actually uh, 
you know, execute all of our curricula in the stage three reopening uh, plans that, that we gave you that you see on your registration. So in essence, as of right now, large ensembles, chamber music ensembles, and private instruction is going to be mostly in person and all of the other courses are going to be online. If we're able to get into a groove and we see things in New Jersey and that Montclair State are doing well, I will consider transitioning in some hybrid modalities in some way, shape or form that are not there now, but are, are on your registered courses. But this is the prudent way to begin. I will, I will tell you one of the other reasons why I'm so comfortable with uh, running some of the in-person things the way we're running it are because of a lot of the uh, mitigation efforts that, that we've taken care of here at the School of Music and at the university and the innovative ways we're going to be doing this. In essence, the bands, most likely the orchestra and the choirs are going to be rehearsing outdoors. <clears throat> um, I don't know, I saw hundreds of people like my Facebook post with Dr. McCauley and myself on there the other day, but you know, the Red Hawk parking deck, seventh and eighth floors, which are open air, some of the safest places to be, are gonna be our new rehearsal areas. And the amphitheater right outside of Castor Theater is gonna be a rehearsal area and a performance area, by the way, for the choirs. Um, We've worked really, really hard to make this happen, and that makes me feel a whole lot better about uh, any kind of transmission rates that in general are occurring indoors. Um, I don't know if a lot of you know, but uh, Johns Hopkins University and uh, the University of Colorado were two of these real um, hotspots for uh, research as far as uh, musicians and COVID are concerned as it pertains to aerosolization rates and droplets uh, in performing our craft. And as it turns out, singers and instrumentalists tend to spit a lot more than the rest of the human race. And through this research, uh, they came up with some really tried and true for now uh, recommendations as far as uh, creating the safest possible environment to have in-person music making. Uh, we at the School of Music, in me in conjunction with my staff, my faculty, I see Dr. McCall here, Dr. Buchanan here, uh, Dr. De Mazon, we've uh, talked about, you know, how we're going to pull something like this off. And we've come up with some really good solutions. Um, this is all based on science. Um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's foolproof, uh, and if it is, I mean, it, this is going to be heroic, but it is as, as, as um, risk-free as humanly possible for us to be able to get together and do this next week. So as we sit here, one week from me seeing a lot of you on campus, um, we, the rubber has, has completely hit the road. Um, I am happy and proud of where we are and what we're ready to do along with all of you and we need all of your help to pull this off every single one of us needs to be cognizant of the science of this of the safety measures and of what we all need to do on a daily if not hourly basis in order for us to run our school of music like not many other people are running a school of music successfully. I'm really excited about it. I, I hope you're excited about it. And I want to talk this evening about, you know, how we're going to do this together and um, what I've done and what we've done um, as a faculty and staff to, to get it ready. And any ideas that you have that I can take notes on so that we can, you know, I mean, to, to say that I've thought about everything, um, I've tried, but, but, you know, you never know. And, um, I'm hoping to get some good ideas from you all as well. So what you probably received yesterday before we start this Q&A, which kind of addresses a lot of your uh, uh, questions, um, was something that you're gonna get quite a bit. I, I'm gonna be incredibly 
uh, repetitive and redundant over the next few days because I don't think you can, you know, communicate out, this out enough. But you, you've seen, if you haven't, you need to see the university's restart plan and um, all of the different uh, things going on at the university level for a safe restart. Uh, the Cali School Restart Plan, which really addresses the, uh, the large ensembles and the in-person music making opportunities are gonna happen. Um, uh, a little bit of a recital policy for you juniors and seniors, which just came out yesterday. I know you got as an email. And um, uh, we can talk about how we're gonna organize some of our concerts. Um, since some of my colleagues are here, <clears throat> I may put them on the spot um, because that means I don't get to need to talk that much, but, um, and obviously the applied lesson policy as well. Um, well, uh, Lauren, what do you think? Should I just go, you, you collected a lot of, um, uh, questions from everybody in advance. Should I just go down that entire list of questions or, or how do you want to do this? Uh, if you'd like, you can go down, <clears throat> excuse me, that list of questions. And, uh, if anyone does have any questions about anything, please feel free to put them in the chat box. Eric will be monitoring that. And at the end, we will ask those questions and have those answered as well. Okay, so um, nobody's seen these questions. I'm gonna read the questions out loud, correct? Uh, yes. All right. Question number one, maybe the most important question, how safe will we be? <laughs> um, there are commuter and residential students coming in and out of everywhere. Well, that is the most important question. It should be the first question. I, I hope I addressed it. Um, you know, for us to choose to run this, this university program in this School of Music this semester, um, the health and safety of everyone, everyone here and all of my faculty who, you know, this is, this is not to say anything else, but, but to say that they're, 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 including me, are more at risk than many of you, is first and foremost on my mind. And I have taken, along with my colleagues, a relative conservative approach, considering that we're taking a bold approach by opening up our school of music, like most aren't. It's a conservative approach in that our ensembles are going to be outdoors, as I said. We're going to limit people indoors. And I would not open the School of Music unless I had a few things completely in place that we actually do have in place that I'll probably answer through the rest of these questions. So how safe will we be? The way I look at it is, in my opinion, you'll be safer than going out to the grocery store. You're going to be safer than going and eating outdoors at a restaurant. And how safe we're all gonna be depends on executing what I've put on paper. The implementation of all of this is the most key. We've made the plans. Now we've got to all do it together, all right? Between the masking, the washing your hands, don't even show up if you have a sniffle, you know, all of that stuff. Every single day, the decisions we make are gonna, you know, really determine how successful we're gonna be. But we have a game plan in order to succeed for sure. Number two, I'm behind on ensemble credits at the moment. If COVID restrictions continue into the next semester and the future, what do you think the ensemble situations will look like? I'm worried I won't be able to get these credits soon enough. I'm gonna make a blanket statement, not only about the ensembles, about everything else, because it's something that, that, that I and, and our faculty have thought about. Anyone under these circumstances that absolutely needs their ensemble credit in order to graduate while we find ourselves in these times is not gonna be prevented from graduating in any way, shape or form and attaining that credit. Not only have, have our ensemble directors created an incredible way to differentiate their instruction for all students. I mean, we have a lot of out of state students who aren't even coming on this semester, but they're remaining registered. Some of them are probably here and I appreciate that so much because I believe that they're gonna get the education they need but if they need to be in person in a large ensemble, we're creating ways for them to be able to attain that, that, that credit. So um, that is heavily on our mind. We are not going to allow this to prevent you from graduating in any single way. I promise you that. Um, and by the way, I'd like my colleagues, if you wanna 
private message me anytime you want to talk. You you let me know. But um, let's go down. We've got a lot of a lot of questions here. My deadline for my recital is October fifteenth. I'm looking to perform at the end of September. The reason I moved it from last spring was COVID. Will I be able to do that in Leschewitz and in person this fall semester? So I attached the recital policies you saw yesterday. Recitals will occur in Leschewitz with the student, with the accompanist, if 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 need be, and with their instructor. We are not going to have audiences. We're going to re be recording or live streaming, depending on what you want, all of our recitals from Leschewitz. You're going to be able to perform your recital in Leschewitz. You will not be able to have more than a quintet, so don't perform, you know, don't, don't schedule any large ensembles for your uh, to, for your recitals. That's not going to be able to happen, but please check out those protocols. We've thought a lot about that. Anyone who needs to do a recital you're going to be doing a recital this year in Leschwitz. Um, what is the protocol for recitals? There you go. Um, I will not be able to take either combo nor big band this semester because of the current situation in my country. What can I do in order to not have to attend next semester? I think I just answered that. Um, what job opportunities are there for a vocal performance major? Well, let's see. We might have job opportunities on campus, but you know, I'll hire you even if you're a vocal performance major. Don't worry about it. I won't hold that against you. Um, otherwise, you know, I, I, I'm not sure that there are any uh, vocal performance jobs open on campus. But I will tell you that, that we're, we're kind of determining where we might need uh, student assistance. And we're going to need a lot of it. Um, and, and, of course, you know, we'll, we'll pay you. Um, and that will be for the smooth running of the school. That will be for social media, which we've got. Um, really going strong. That'll be for a lot of things, so please stay tuned for that. How will practice rooms work this semester? Okay, um, you've seen the safety precautions and guidelines about the sanitation, but let me walk you through the way I'm thinking about the um, practice rooms. Um, if you're living on campus, you know that you have a different living situation where everybody's in a single, and I highly recommend you use that space as a practice room. You don't have to. The practice rooms on the fourth floor for right now, as of yesterday, are all open in the School of Music. Um, so let's just talk about the fourth floor. The fourth floor, we are not going. We we never have um, scheduled practice time for practice space, and we're not going to do that now. We're going to open up the fourth floor first. Every floor starting this Friday is going to have a shelf in there. It's going to have a few things. It's going to have a disinfectant spray. That's, uh, that, that is approved for killing all viruses. It's gonna have um, cloths that we're going to uh, uh, rotate through on a daily basis several times a day. And it's gonna have approved um, uh, wipes for pianos. Everyone who uses a practice room uh, is going to be tasked with, and we're gonna write this down, we'll laminate them in the room, uh, disinfecting whatever you touch when you leave the room with the uh, disinfectants that we are leaving there for you. Uh, we're only opening up to the fourth floor for now. Um, I want to see how that goes. Um, and then I will open up the third floor after that. The third and the second floor right now we're using to schedule students who want to take private lessons where their instructor might be remote or in a different room in the building, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So right now we're talking about the fourth floor practice rooms. Um, uh, and although we will have some monitors, which is another student uh, job to, to kind of ascertain how long people have been in and out of there, because I highly recommend at least a half an hour wait before somebody, you know, you don't want to walk right into a practice room after somebody else has been in there. We're going to do our best to monitor that. But this is where the smooth running of the practice rooms is really going to be coming upon the students as far as going in, sanitizing when you're done, not leaving your stuff there and, and going somewhere else for a while. That's really that it's never been okay, but definitely not going to be okay now. And um, being as mindful as possible. So we're going to start with the fourth floor um, and we're going to see how that goes. Please do feel free to practice in your rooms. Um, and obviously those room, uh, the practice rooms are going to be open from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. seven days a week. Will the Rust practice rooms be accessible to students? I'm not um, satisfied with the HVAC system in Rust. I would, um, they may be open because everybody can card in, 
Uh, I would do that at your own risk. I will be very, very careful to tell you when I think something's not a good idea and I think practicing in the rust practice rooms without any kind of serious HVAC is a very bad idea. Uh, what is the reservation policy? I noted that we're not reserving it. Again, we're gonna, we're gonna slowly transition in here. We're, I wanna hear your feedback. Um, I, we're going to have um, students monitoring the spaces to see um, how crowded it is. I really don't believe it's gonna be that crowded while we have a large percentage of, of students who are actually, um, uh, uh, you know, coming to uh, Cali, uh, sorry, sorry, registered for Cali school uh, this semester. We do not have a lot of people who are stepping on campus as per some communication that we've put out. So again, let's see how it goes. Please be patient. We're going to really slowly transition in here. And the last thing I want to do is hit this place with, you know, a ton of humans right off the bat. I think that would really be a not great idea. Um, what is changing, what resources are allowed. Um, I think I probably uh, noted that, but if you have any questions, please let me know. Students often teach lessons on the side. Will they be able to do so and use Cali practice rooms? No, absolutely not. Um, you, you actually should not be using the Cali practice rooms to teach your own private lessons on the side. Anyway, I'm glad you asked, because now you know, you heard it here. Um, but no, please don't do that. Um, as a matter of fact, I mean, there's such a protocol for guests and everything else. You do not want anybody on campus who, you know, really is not normally on campus. Um, ensembles, how will, oh, uh, 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 how will ensembles work? Um, you know what? I, I, I'm, I'm just so happy my colleagues are here. I, would you, Dr. Buchanan, starting with you, would you mind, you know, speaking a few minutes about because I see a lot of choral questions. I know you've been communicating with your students. You mind saying a few words tonight about it? Sure, happy to. Um, and thank you again to NAFME for putting this together. So if you are a choral person uh, and you're already registered, everything you wanna know is already on Canvas. Um, we've been messaging out very consistently over the summer. We had a University Singers Think Tank student leaders have been uh, really generous about contributing ideas and um, as of this moment there are syllabi for both choirs and you know what my syllabi are like right leave nothing to the imagination so um, really if you just read the announcements and look through those syllabi um, and then spend just 10 minutes or so looking over canvas you'll be able to get a really good idea but just super fast um, for the fall, so far, chorale is going to be divided into five modules. And both the chorale and the university singers are moving forward um, with the first priority being uh, quality education and music and the safety of our students and our faculty in mind. So we've got, a, um, as you know, a, a, a very strong commitment to building community and working with the idea that this is an opportunity, a kind of institutional sabbatical, if you like, where we have a chance to explore new ideas and to also uh, dive deeper into some of the skill development that you need as an individual and ensemble, but sometimes don't have as much time or experience with when you're in the normal hamster wheel of life. So Corral is going to be doing a five modules with five different instructors, myself, Stephen Ryan, Professor Driscoll, Professor Mello, and uh, my graduate assistant. And we're gonna be looking at technology, at diction, um, at voice technique. Uh, and we're gonna be using the Foray Requiem as the core repertoire, although we're also gonna be cross-referencing with uh, some of the literature that you might encounter in Professor Dolp's music history classes, if you're a junior or a sophomore and possibly even music theory if they ever get their information to me. So we're looking to try and make things um, interdisciplinary where we can. And you will have six uh, lessons with each instructor in these modules. And our commitment to you is that you show up and you will have 75 minutes of, of action-packed um, excitement, thrills and adventures in that time. And then you walk away without having to do any gratuitous busy work 
or anything that would seem to be a redundancy. That's the goal. Just like you would normally when you come to choir, you're there, you're engaged, you're participating, you're growing, you're learning. So if you, um, by next week, you'll be able to see outlines of the topic areas for each of the modules. Um, but that's what you'll be doing. And I think it's going to be wonderful. We're also dividing you into cohorts. So you will be in groups of about 30 or less. And you're being organized according to your major, your year level, your amount of technical expertise, etc. So for example, all the freshmen, you're in cohort A and you get to start with me next week and so forth. And we're going to move you all around in ways that each of these topic areas can be calibrated to the interests and experience level of the people in that cohort. And we think that that's also a, a sort of a level of individual or personalization that we normally can't do when it's just one big symphonic choir. So that's Corral. There will be no singing in any indoor area for the Hawk Live, which Stevie and I are de delivering. Um, it will be just uh, in the classroom with the mask, everything else online. For university singers, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be making music in the amphitheater and in the parking deck, uh, depending on weather and so forth. Uh, we have one third of the choir online for most of the weeks. So we've got three rehearsal retreats that are happening in September and one, uh, three, th two in September, one in October. So it's three days, uh, hoping that everything stays open where everybody who has, and we will all be COVID tested and, and everybody safe, will be coming together in the amphitheater to record and make music that will be then broadcast. And we have a professional engineer who's hired to do that. Uh, we're looking to do a little bit of MTV choir stuff. And we also have a TV broadcasts class that's following us around for the semester and making a documentary about what we're doing. So that will be kind of cool. We're also gonna do a world premiere piece uh, by one of our student composers, Jude Duane. It was supposed to be premiered for Kaleidoscope and it still will be. Um, and we're gonna see what it's like to sing and perform in outdoor venues with a little help from technology to get the mics to work really well. So that's what we're looking to do there. Um, we're probably gonna do a socially distanced Messiah uh, it really depends on the students, it depends on the weather, it depends on the virus. Uh, but what I do know is that the students who've signed on for University Singers are flexible, they're open, they're resilient, and they're excited. And I, I'm just really thrilled that we're going to have a, a fabulous experience together. And, and I just also want to thank the director for supporting us, because if it wasn't for Tony Mazaki, a lot of the dreaming and the scheming would not have been possible. So, yep, I'm excited about what I'm doing, but I just want to put it out there that this director is really making it possible for me to do the best I can. Thanks, Tony. You know, I hope, I hope you all can hear what, what's behind this. There's a lot of thought, a lot of planning. Um, I know speed dial doesn't really exist anymore, but I've had all of them on speed dial and they've had me on speed dial all summer. We've talked about this daily because the science has been changing daily and I think we're in a really good place. Let me keep on answering the questions that you uh, put down. Um, so you just heard about ensembles and you know, right now the weather's good. We're gonna go with that. Um, in inclement weather, we have plans so you don't need to worry about that. But um, you know, when we get through September, I mean, you know, this is something that we're not just executing and, and sitting back and watching it go. We're going to be, you know, we, we're remaining very flexible um, and um, ready to pivot uh, one way or another. And so we're going to keep in touch with you and try to stay in front of everything. When the weather gets cold, either things are going to be better and we're going to have great plans or things are not going to be better and we're going to have plans for that as well. And so you know, stay tuned. But right now, as far as next week is concerned, and throughout August and most of September, I feel really, really good about it. Uh, when a class is labeled Hawk Mix, and I do not feel comfortable coming to campus, can we opt to take the class online? Obviously, you know, there, there are other Hawk Mix courses that are occurring on campus. There are other hybrid courses that are occurring. As you, you heard me say early, and I'll say it again, and I'll own this, I have decided to keep what we're doing simple because the simple 
is still unbelievably complex. You know, we're going to start with this. We're going to go with this. Um, and the short answer is, uh, is no. Oh, look at Professor Driscoll as a Russian blue attacking her. I have a Russian blue who attacks me too. That's good. Um, anyway, uh, so, so if, you know, you need to be in touch with your instructor if you can't come to campus for whatever reason, okay? No questions asked, we just need to know. And please, please contact your instructor. And um, this is something that's gonna happen quite a bit, so don't worry about that. Uh, what is the face-to-face -face capacity for Hawk Mix class? Well, um, you know, again, it's kind of moot. Uh, we're, not, we're not doing this, but we do have um, uh, classroom capacities in the Cali School. So let's talk about that really quickly. Actually, I'm glad you brought this up. You would be extremely unwise to be in a small practice room at the Cali School of Music with more than one person on the fourth floor, okay? We have, um, we have arranged for these small group instructions or, or chamber music to occur in our large rooms. Uh, G55 and 201 have uh, uh, an ultraviolet um, uh, HVAC system installed, which is basically the only thing known to kill 99.9% .9 of um, all viruses, including coronavirus. So because of that, we feel comfortable enough to schedule one-on-one -on -one instruction in there as much as we possibly can. You're about 30 feet away, which is five times more than what's recommended. Some of you will have bell coverings and masks, um, and we have the UV HVAC. This is a no-brainer to us. The smaller the room gets, do the math, you know, the riskier it gets. And so you should not be in a small practice room with more than one person. I don't care if it's your friend. I certainly care if it's an accompanist. It should not be anybody. And you need to, you need to be aware of that. Um, so let's see, why did I, why did I get, oh, um, will there be, let's see, uh, was the face-to-face -face capacity. So um, in our large rooms, even with the HVAC, um, our capacity is 10 for G55 and 201, and it goes down from there. If you're singing, if you're creating music, if you're literally actively uh, singing or, or, or playing, if you're not and it's a lecture course, it could be more, but we're, st we're, not, we're not holding any of those. G1, G2, we're allowing 10. Um, again, but that's not for um, active uh, uh, playing or singing. That would be for the lecture classes, including um, the, uh, the chorale. Um, uh, um, oh, geez. Uh, what, did, what did Dr. Pecanum call them? You have five different... Uh, modules. Modules. So one of those modules, that is okay. Um, but it should not be more than five in a G1, G2, 230, 330, um, you know, which is chamber music. It should not be more than five performing on instruments or singing. Okay. Um, how will keyboard classes be held? Keyboard classes in general are online. However, our keyboard lab is open um, because all labs are open on campus. Our, our keyboard and our computer lab are open for you to be able to practice. Of course, you can also practice on, um, on uh, uh, pianos in, in small practice rooms. Um, the uh, Monsoon Kim, our coordinator of keyboard, uh, will secondary keyboard will be in touch with everybody, but keyboard in essence is online. If you, can, if you do not have a keyboard at home, you cannot afford a keyboard at home, I'm sparing no expense here. We will purchase you a keyboard that they've approved and we will find a way to get it to you. You need to let Monsoon Kim know. Um, <clears throat> although uh, piano lessons will be in person. Um, yes, the keyboard lab's open. How will juries operate this semester? Are we still having them? Yes, juries are gonna be remote. Um, there's no doubt because the university has already scheduled itself to be remote after Thanksgiving. Be prepared, stay tuned. They will be very, um, very well thought out and detailed. Um, let's see, by the first week of class, is it okay if I do not have the book for class right away due to money reasons? Yes, of course. Please contact me or your instructor if you have any 
real issues. We're not going to penalize you for that. As a commuter student who comes to campus two days a week for one class, what is the best parking option? You know, for the first time in Montclair's history, parking may not be an issue. Um, you know, the parking lots are open. You're going to come on campus. You're going to see College Hall is actually complete. Um, and so therefore Red Hawk Central is gone. That's a parking lot again. Um, there's going to be, there's going to be some adequate parking. I can't conduct my Zoom voice lessons in my dorm as I would get noise complaint from residence life. Will Chapin practice rooms be reserved? Absolutely. The faculty member will be reserving for the student. And let me, let me just say something about the private instruction. Um, at all possible. But you know, every school of music has, well, first of all, most are online, but the school of music's, a school of music like, like ours have the uh, infrastructure that we have. We have some large rooms that are very good for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Um, luckily, Brass and Woodlands are choosing to do a lot of stuff outside or even on the Red Hawk deck, great. But as far as singers are concerned, we know through this pandemic, then singing is not as COVID friendly as everything else that we, that we do. So we are being very careful to be able to um, provide to you what we can with the time that we have for these in-person lessons. The large rooms with UV HVAC, no brainer. Obviously that's at a premium. The larger rooms, also decent. And then of course the drop off is really big. I want everybody to be able to see their students as much as humanly possible. But I will tell you that the instructor and the student should not be contorting their instruction, their curriculum, or their time, or your time, in order to make this happen. We want to have everybody safe. So um, I've procured a lot of uh, say the art software. Um, uh, what was it? Is it ClearTune? Um, Clear something. Oh, geez. Well, anyway. I'll remember in a minute. Um, again, I'm sparing no expense so that you can have the best possible instruction. Our instructors really want to make this happen. In a lot of cases, the timing, because of your classes and their availability, your availability and the room availability might not, oh, clean feed, thank you, Lori, <laughs> Dr. McCann. Um, you know, they, it might not work out, but know that we are trying as hard as we possibly can to, to accommodate all of this. Um, and, uh, and, and let's see where it goes. I just needed to say that about the, uh, the private instruction. Um, are we able to host in-person events at Cali? Uh, I want to say no. Um, if an in-person event is a recital with an audience, anything with an audience, um, as of right now, no. You've all been with me through this thing. Every single week is a different story. You're going to be hearing from me more uh, than, than every single week. And we're going we're gonna to see where this thing goes. But as we sit here today, um, in-person events uh, beyond our large ensembles, our chamber music ensembles, our in-person instruction, um, uh, your recitals uh, is, is not going to happen. Uh, Dr. Witten, can you please repeat which rooms have UV rays? Well, we have UV HVAC. Uh, we have, it's an it's basically an HVAC system that has ultraviolet rays that are inside the system. They are not strong enough to penetrate uh, human bodies. There's not UV, it's not, you know, ultraviolet rays that are going across the room. Um, so what it is doing is it is sucking in all the air from the room through the ultraviolet rays, pumping it back out. And we're finding that we get one full exchange of air through there, which means all of the air in the room is fully exchanged through this ultraviolet ray in between five to 10 minutes. Um, that is a very good thing. Um, but those are the only rooms, 201 and G55. Um, how are lockers being handled? Uh, please get in touch with Lindsay Setzer. We have a lot of people who still have of course, there are items in their lockers from last semester. She's been trying to get in touch with everybody. And um, of course, lockers will still be able to be used. All right. Those are the questions. We've got a lot of questions in chat. Lauren, 
What do you want to do? I know Dr. Buchanan wanted to show uh, the singer's mask. And while she's doing that, I will just pull up the questions uh, from the chat. Okay, I, I have one too. So, so I'm just um, sent privately because they didn't know. Um, I understand you mentioned about outsiders using our practice rooms along with music students, but what about other mu MSU students that are not music? Okay, so the only thing I said about outsiders, only school of music students or students who are taking music courses can use our practice rooms along with music. But what about other music students that are not music students? If you're not a music major, but you're taking music courses as per usual, and you're an MSU student, you can use the uh, practice rooms, but there should be no one else using practice rooms besides M Cali School of Music majors and other MSU students, which are very few and far between that play an instrument, no one else. How will that be monitored? Will we use our ID cards to get into the school? Not a bad idea in all practice rooms as well. Um, Right now, uh, students are swiping in. Um, I think we're going to put our um, I think we're going to put our school on automatic unlock and lock. Um, we do have practice room monitors as we always have, um, but unless I feel like I need to have practice room monitors ask all students if they're actual music students, which you know I'm not at that point yet. Um, you know I'll revisit it, but. Um, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not thinking that, you know, we're going to insist on seeing all ideas for everybody uh, doing that. Um, okay, Lauren, do you want to read or you want me to read? I, I could do it. Uh, yeah, you, you can totally read them. Recitals will need to be scheduled before Thanksgiving, right? Given the school be online after. Yes, please look at the recital protocols. Um, this is not to say that if you have to or you need to, you cannot fulfill your recital requirement online. But if you want to use Leshowitz, um, we're opening it up. Um, we're, I'm being very, very careful with it right now. We're basically, we're basically scheduling one recital in Leshowitz a day throughout the week. And we're doing a two, five and eight, 2 p.m., 5 p.m., 8 p.m. And recitals are gonna be truncated to follow the science. It can't be more than an hour total. Um, and it's a half an hour with time for air exchange and another half an hour, please look at these recital protocols, okay? Your repertoire, your timing, and the ensembles that you choose to have in here are affected by this. And you have to understand this is not to make your life difficult. This is to abide by the only research that I have at our disposal to make sure that you're in a safe space, okay? What is the capacity for the keyboard lab? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, let's see, when we, I just saw it. You're going to see stickers on all of the um, labs. It's it's quite small. It's I think it's around six. Um, you're going to have to look at a time. It's six. Um, it might be seven. I'll look again. In in good times, the capacity of the lab is fifteen, so it's probably a third of that. Yeah, yeah. I I think I saw six because we spread them out, but that's it. Can you please repeat? Okay. Uh, uh, will Wednesday at one still happen or no? We'll be modified for online performances. Really great question. Well, our Wednesday at one, because of our change of schedule, is now 1.30. And we're, I think we're calling it the Cali Midday Series. We're kind of working on that, but we're, we're pretty close. Uh, Dr. Buchanan and the concert committee have, uh, have made a list of those. And um, that's actually also, those are in the email I sent you and you'll, you'll see them again. So you can see the schedule. The first Cali midday series is gonna be a town hall, much like this one with me and all the faculty um, uh, next week. So concerts are really interesting. We have a few uh, concerts that are actually uh, scheduled on specific days, uh, mostly ensembles, but some other things. But a lot of the other <coughs> moments for performance that we have, um, is going to be done in, in a very interesting way. So we're going to have a mixture of your large ensemble, uh, uh, chamber music ensemble, um, you know, the, the, the African drumming ensemble, the Balkan ensemble, chamber music, all this stuff um, recorded by one of our in-house uh, 
uh, videographers, but there might be places where you're going to send us through your coaches, you're going to send us moments of performances that you have yourself, both solo and otherwise. Um, the coordinators for each Wednesday midday series are going to organize that. Mm -hmm. And really what I'm doing is I'm collecting all of these um, uh, videos. Mostly they're not going to be live live stream, although some will. Um, everybody has to mute, mute, by the way, I hear some conversations. Um, they're not going to all be live streamed, but um, we're going to have recordings. We're going to mash them up and we're going to push them out on those Wednesday at 1.30s. And we're going to push them out uh, very regularly. If you look at the Cali School of Music website, um, we're building out um, a concert page that's going to list all these concerts. And it has embedded in it um, a live feed that's going to show our, our live streams of our live concerts. And it's also going to show uh, these videos that we're going to push out on a very regular basis. So we're going to celebrate your performances as much as possible. It's going to be in a very different way. Um, this is going to be driven by your coordinators and your private instructors, etc. And I think we've got something really cool going on. So um, uh, let's see. Somebody mentioned practicum actually. So practicum um, is going to be done in two ways. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm, I'm really, I want to be very conservative in our approach to practicum. Practicum is officially listed as online, um, even though it's a performance class. There are some uh, practicum instructors who are choosing to do something where the student performing that day or students performing that day, the accompanist and the coach may be in person on campus while everybody's zooming in. That I approve of. Most practicas are uh, rather densely populated and um, really don't fit into this whole thing. So uh, I, I, I don't recommend or approve of entire practica uh, meeting in person on campus, but the coordinators and the instructors, and they'll be in touch with you about it, who choose to do it in that modified way, um, I approve of. Um, again, you know, I want to start slow and crescendo if we can, as opposed to uh, an initial surge and saying, why did we do that? So I'm remaining really conservative and practicum uh, fit that bill. So, in the, oh, sorry, in the, in the event that you do meet on campus and that's happening, uh, the instructor will reserve the large room and the accompanist and the student will play in there. Would it be possible to have a quote, when students entered and left sheet outside doors of practice rooms? It's not a bad idea at all. It's really not a bad idea at all. I'm going to give Christina Monticello the uh, props for that. I like that a lot. You're hired. Um, thanks for that, Christina. I like that. Uh, Heather Buchanan wrote about, okay. Dr. Driscoll, what should a student do or who should they tell if they see a group of other students not social distancing? You know, this is a really good at a party. Yeah, right. Anyway, um, so we're in a really interesting situation here because we, we haven't necessarily appointed social distancing police. Um, although, don't be surprised if I, because I'm going to be on campus five days a week, am that guy. Um, and we're going to have, you know, instructors and we're going to have other students. But really, you know, if you look at the Cali Restart Plan, we know that the only way to be, you know, properly avoiding this virus is masking, is social distancing, and is washing our hands and being cognizant of our surroundings as if, you know, on a daily basis, you go out pretending you have it. And what would you do if you had it? So it is incumbent upon all of us to do it. And if we find ourselves needing to overly police people or do all of those things, obviously you need to tell me um, because I am that person. But I'm really hoping in my heart of hearts that we as a school of music, knowing that musicians 
have the capacity to pass this virus more than anyone else in the act of doing what we love are going to do what it takes to avoid that at all costs. So I'm going to beg you all, please help me in this. And, and, and you know, think about it as, as educating. I mean, people haven't watched the news as much as I have. People haven't attended the webinars as much as I have. Maybe they really don't know. Help them understand. And if they don't do it after that, yeah, then we'll kick their butt. But, but you know, please let me know, okay? Don't feel like you have to do this on your own. You have a lot of people here. We're prepared to do it with you, but it's a good question. Um, okay. That's, that's everything. Yeah, Dr. Buchanan would like to show uh, the singer's masks. So without further ado, Dr. Buchanan. Okay, so uh, just a little experiment. I want everybody to close their eyes for a moment and do that thing that musicians do best and just use your ears. Okay, and uh, just so you know, of all the things I'd like to be, I'd like to be a bass. And Wait just a minute, hold on. Dr. Buchanan, you could just stop your video so that nobody cheats. Yeah, but I trust everybody because- oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Because Tom McCauley's watching me because I just, that's just, you know, <laughs> it's all good. Of all okay. the things I'd like to be, I'd like to be a bass and climb up all the seaweed trees and slide down on my hands and knees. Okay, open your eyes. Now tell me at what point did I put on the mask? $64 and dinner for two at the Mazakis, if you can answer that question accurately. <laughs> He's building an outdoor kitchen, I'm expecting. An invitation. Isn't this incredible? Are you excited because the Cali School is giving you one of these for free? Okay, so these are um, designed in oh, such a way are, that are they are sized. A core. This is a medium, but they're sized. And if you're, of course, a choral student, you already know where to get the links and go check it out. In fact, you should have already given us your size. So the good thing is, there's no more glasses fogging up, um, no more exchange of germs as much as a mask can. So these are proven to be about 95% effective, which is as good as any N95 mask. You don't breathe in fabric, hallelujah. But most of all, um, the spectrographic analysis is such that we're not compromising sound. We're not straining voices, etc., etc. And of course they can be fitted in ways that make it super easy to get them on and off. You, you wear it, it has to be washed each time you've used it. So we're recommending that you start with the one we give you and then run to the bookstore and grab yourself some more. Yeah, they're a little spendy, but it's worth it at what price your health, right? So, um, and they come in black or white, but we're getting black because, you know, black is slimming. So there it is. That, I wanted to see who was actually listening. They also come in a fantastic little bag like this that is also um, antimicrobial and to help you transport it. Although I went and got my own because, you know, I just like zippy ties that are in landscape instead of portrait. Uh, now, the, the good news is you're getting them. The bad news is that they're back ordered and then they're not going to get to us until just after early, early September, right? So we're going to be dealing with traditional cloth masks for those first um, few rehearsals. But uh, the good thing about being outdoors is once you're more than six feet, you don't need a mask or anything like that. However, I've got face shields for anybody who really just wants to have something on because if you're like me, you just want to keep people like far away from you. Um, so between the face shields and the masks, we've got you covered. All you've got to do is show up with your music learned. How awesome is that? Thank you, Lauren. I, I do want to say the Cali School of Music has also purchased the uh, bell coverings for all the brass and woodwinds uh, for, for the bands. Um, and um, those have proven to be pretty incredible and have the same effect as what you just heard. I can't believe it. They barely sound any different with the covering on the bell. So. Somebody's making a whole lot of money figuring that out right now. Yeah, I'm just disappointed it's not us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Can I just also draw your attention to the message I put for everybody um, as part of the midweek uh, Wednesdays? Uh, we're doing um, a two-part series with Dr. Courtney Plotz, who is 
absolutely phenomenal talking about race and how we as a music school and a community can address this issue and move forward in really healthy and constructive ways. So she's gonna do a two-part series. It's not the same thing twice. It's a genuine two-part series. Um, she is a, a, a absolutely amazing. I've done um, workshops with her and she is making herself available to Montclair State. Uh, she was a, a Philly girl born and bred. Um, and really has some good skills that are going to help us move forward in our conversation. I'm requiring all of the, uh, the choral people to attend those sessions because that's going to be a central part of the conversations that we're having in university singers in particular. But I just really like to implore all of you to seriously consider coming to those sessions so that uh, we can use that as a, as a, a constructive springboard for the conversations about the issues that we know we need to have. Thank you so much, Dr. Buchanan. And thank you so much to our fabulous director. Give him a little clap emoji in your corner. Thank you so much for agreeing to be here and for working with us. Uh, thank you to my e-board for helping to put this together. Dr. Buchanan, all of our faculty, um, there will be notes that are posted on our website and our social media pages just in case you missed anything. We've also been recording this. The two Zooms will be strung together and we can also post that for you. Uh, so you guys can watch it back if you missed absolutely anything. And we have an event on September 16th, which is Mental Health with Dr. Viega. Be sure to join us. Thank you so much everyone for joining us and Elijah, do you have anything else left to say? Lauren, I just wanted to say real quick before, you know, and thank you, thank you all again, but, and, and you need to be able to um, email me or, or message me or whatever with any questions, but I, I, I need to say one more time that, you know, while we've been communicating pretty well, we've waited um, for some things because anything, if we had this Zoom meeting two weeks ago, it would have been very different than the Zoom meeting we had today. And I, I wanna thank all of our staff. I wanna thank all of our faculty who have, when I tell you how hard everybody's been working so that we can see you in person and make this happen, it, it, it really, it, it warms my heart, but things are changing really fast. So we're gonna communicate as well as we can, as often as we can, and let's really, really, work as hard as we can to ensure that you know we are the school that can really pull this off because a lot of people are watching it's not happening a lot of people are watching and we're not doing this for any kind of bravado or to brag we're doing this because the science tells us that it's possible and um so let's do this together i need your help and i can't wait to see you all even if i'm only going to see half of your face and um and you, you message me with anything you need. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right, everyone have a great rest of your evening. Be safe and we'll see you next week.